The 2016 election has divided the... Yeah, 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 whatever. Like, it wasn't divided before this election? Come on. You are, in a way, the the disaffected voter. The, the things that happen to you are very typical of, of who voted for Trump. Well, in a month... Ugh, you horrible Trump supporter. You stupid, stupid, racist, gay-hating Trump supporter. Oh, I hate you. Microcosm, I am the United States of America. I was hit really hard by the economy, especially due to the nature of my work. I'm in the home improvement industry. I pretty much lost what I thought was everything. Uh, you know, financially, uh, you lose your self-respect. But most important thing being family, I toughened up and did what I had to do and got through the last eight years, probably five of those years were really brutal. I didn't feel represented at all by either party. And that's why I decided to throw my support behind Trump. Was he my first choice? No. But I, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I saw a lot of me and Trump. Your reasons for voting were very economic. My reasons for being afraid of your vote were very stupid, were very social and fear-based and and so her reasons for voting or being afraid of his vote were fear-based and she's admitting this she's admitting that her rationality if you want to call it that is one based on fear oh, that's a good start at least she admits it you i hear a lot of that from from people who uh were voting for hillary clinton and frankly i don't understand it because i have a ton of pictures that I took mm -hmm. at, the tr at a Trump rally, where uh, I saw people with signs, Holocaust survivors for Trump, World War II vets for Trump, uh, women for Trump, Mexicans for Trump, uh, blacks for Trump. And they didn't look like the kind of people that were, you know, uh, paid to go there. And those photos are all on, on your Twitter account. I mean, she's acting as, a, as if she, she is completely unaware that these demographics were actually represented at, at Trump rallies. I mean, it, it, it's, it's shocking to her. And it's shocking to a lot of these uh, people who just can't um, come back down to, to reality that it wasn't just white people, you know, it wasn't just white people that, that uh, elected Trump. There was a lot of demographics, um, but you just it's so shocking because it wasn't reported. And here's a reporter, the interviewer, who is acting as if she, I mean, this has to be explained to her by the, by the interviewee. I mean, he has to refer her uh, to these things. Which you right. sent me to go look at, so I did. Right. And, and I think I put white lash. Yeah. Because is that Chris, white, is Chris, this really white lash when I see you, all these different people there? You want to know what they're scared of. Chris, they're scared of you. Oh, my gosh. It's so sickening. I mean, listener, they're scared of you. I don't want to be too hard on this woman, honestly. I mean, I'm trying to be a little um, easy on her because, uh, you know, she is attempting to have a conversation. She is highlighting something that hasn't been highlighted, um, th that being the, the kind of commonplace average Trump supporter. But anyway, I mean, just listen to this. You're, I mean, it's, it's, it's sickening. They're scared of you. That's what they're scared of. Just to provide some extra context, um, the they, the who's scared of him, um, are his neighbors. These two, the interview and the interviewee, are neighbors apparently, uh, and apparently the neighborhood that they live in is a, a suburb in New York, which is obviously uh, going to be predominantly uh, liberal, left-leaning, and uh, apparently his neighbors are afraid of him because he has Trump signs and Trump bumper stickers. I, <laughs> yes, that that that's that's the generation. Uh, we're in right now. That is the uh, sad state of affairs. D have they stopped and th just thought that hmm, maybe I don't have anything to be scared of? Maybe I should actually look further into this. Maybe I should actually look at facts. Maybe should I can consider facts. Remember those things called facts, people? You know, not just emotions and fear, but facts. Maybe I should look. What 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 are these people? Are these people really dangerous? I don't know. I mean, I don't see too many murders being committed by uh, the, 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 these horrible racist Trump supporters. I mean, I mean, I guess if I just 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 just, just listen to, 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 to the news and, and let them do my thinking for me, that might be the conclusion I draw. Uh, but I mean, 
this is this like, we're just getting started here and I don't understand that because I'm not I'm not scary. I'm not blindsiding you here. I told you right. I was gonna yes, I you was did. gonna do this. Of Hillary Clinton, you wrote that smug C word yes. has been sitting on that tape just waiting to release it to the media. You showed your true commie colors. Finally someone is speaking to this effing witch. So he's referring her to his Twitter page and she's you know made aware the the the, the, the guy um you know, kind of makes a point that, hey, yeah, there was a lot of demographics. There was um, black people for Trump, Jews for Trump, uh, women for Trump. And the only thing that she's taking from this is the comments that he's about to make or that he uh, that he did make um, about uh, Clinton. The way she deserves to be yeah, spoken to. Yeah, and that's a to. visceral reaction to 30 years of watching the Clintons build this this whole elitist circle of themselves, their friends, the people in the media that that help them out greatly. I mean, you know, you got Donna Brazil feeding questions to the DNC. So when I look, at all my anger uh, is expressed in a tweet like that. That is a that is a a pressure relief valve for me. Is Twitter? I mean, is it really that hard? Is it that difficult to understand why people don't like or didn't like or want Hillary Clinton to be president? Is it that difficult? Are you that? Uh, ignorant? I mean, I hate using that word because, you know, you're ignorant. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's it's the uh, word of the week. Um, but is, is it that hard to understand? I, I don't even think it's a suspicion anymore. It, as evident here, she doesn't even bother to say, well, what do you mean? What, what did Hillary Clinton do that really has you so upset? She's not going to investigate that, you know, because, of course, you know, Hillary Clinton, she's, she's um, to be worshipped. She's an idol. She's a She's a a goddess there's plenty of reasons plenty of reasons and it's okay if you don't like a particular candidate it's why is it so difficult for for these these liberals to just grasp that look both candidates were not good they they, they were not uh um as i think he even mentions um at some point it wasn't his you know trump wasn't even uh, his first pick I don't think Trump or Clinton were were were, were, uh, were hardly anybody's first pick. But I mean, is it that difficult to understand why somebody doesn't want a criminal as as our president? If you are tweeting things that I can't read because your daughter's in the other room, isn't that a problem? What what she's doing right here is she's trying to invoke irrationality in him by bringing up his children. You see, her argument and her she, she's dealing with emotions, right? Her whole uh, kind of argument here is is based on emotions. So what she's doing is she's trying to invoke his emotions by bringing up his kids so that she, he can be brought down to her level of, of thinking. I think so, but I also realize, you know, I would be a little more responsible if I had more than 100 followers on Twitter, you know? It's, a, it's an outlet. It's an outlet for me, and I'm not ashamed of it. My name is on there. You know, I mean, I would never want my kids to hear that language. But I don't think little kids go on Twitter. I mean, I wouldn't let my kids on Twitter until they're 30. Uh, but I wouldn't let them, I'm not going to let them date until they're 30. We have old sea face Elizabeth Warren. Yes. Typical crazy old dried up liberal loony woman. Yes. Michelle Obama has Dracula fangs and Frankenstein shoulders. What difference does it make what she looks like? They, she looks, what look, you know, I'll tell difference you why. does and it make? I'll tell you exactly make? why I said I mean, it's just, it's so typical. It's so typical. Don't act. Let's not look at you know the the real you know the other other aspects here. Of there were uh, black supporters, gay supporters, female supporters, uh, Latina supporters for Trump. You know which he you know evidences in his in his Twitter. Let's just look at what the the bad things he said. Let's just go go ahead. Let's go back to feelings. I don't like these these words. These these are hurtful words here, Chris. Said that. Everybody says how beautiful she looks in a sleeveless dress and how what, what a beautiful first lady she is. Do I have anything against her personally? No, I don't know the woman. I wish her the best. But, I, you know, I say it tongue in cheek. I have been called names that, frankly, I had never seen written out before for stories I've written because of this atmosphere that this campaign has created. And, you know, and tweets like this, thoughts like this, Tell me why I shouldn't be frightened. Frightened is a strong word, but I see things that cause me great concern. 
when I see people, I would consider myself, yes, on the right. So when I see people on the left saying things, back when Bush was president, right, uh, equating him with Hitler, I mean, that concerns me. It's the president. You got to have a little bit of respect for the office. When Obama came on for eight years, I felt, hey, what the hell? You're going to talk about my guy that way? Now I can say what I want about your guy. What's fair is fair. Toughen up. Hey, maybe Obama goes to Dallas today and he can hop into a convertible drive, through drive Dealey by Plaza. Dealey Plaza. Yeah. And it says, I'm just saying. So everybody knows when you say that, it's a joke. But again, I mean, it, it, I thought the purpose of this um, discussion was to kind of get into the mind and understand the, the, the Trump supporter, the angry white Trump supporter. And it doesn't, seems like all she really wants to really do here is just kind of get him to admit that he shouldn't have used those, uh, that type of language and he shouldn't have said the things he said. Again, why are you saying this? Well, I mean, that's, that's, it, it doesn't seem like that, that any of that is being really addressed here. Um, it just, it, again, it seems to be a lecture on how can you say these things? It's like, it's, it's not that hard to say these things because I'm, I have the freedom to say it. I, I should always have the freedom to say it. And you have the freedom to dislike it. You don't have the freedom to tell me that I can't say it. I mean, is, is that really, is it that fundamental of a discussion? I mean, is, is it? Because it, even if you make it that fundamental of a discussion, they, it just seems like that's not what they want. You know, they just don't want these things being said. I mean, unless it's about Christians. I mean, typically Christians seem to be, um, and conservatives and, and, you know, white men, they seem to be the only ones that, um, you know, you can kind of wish death upon. And it's, eh, yeah, maybe, it's, maybe it's, eh, it's not a bad idea. You know, it's kind of the remark uh, and the kind of the, the uh, um, sad and, and uh, predictable um, sentiment. By, by a lot of these, not saying her specifically, but um, a lot of the left that gets away with it. You know, they're allowed to get away with it. The, the conservatives, the right wingers, we're, we're, you know, we're not allowed to get away with it. Every time we say one negative thing about a demographic or a group of people, it's like, how can you say that? How can you say that? How do you sleep at night? I take a ride through Dealey Plaza. It's funny. It is actually funny. Talk to me I about have a it. twisted sense of humor. Talk to me about Islamophobia. What you wrote, only way to end all forms of Islamic terrorism, kill each and every Muslim on the face of the earth. Yes, and as a, as a matter of fact... So if you haven't already by now, you probably picked up on her obvious um, disapproval of these comments, and I think that's the, that's the bigger issue that she's missing and that a lot of these liberals miss, um, particularly with um, the, the trolling... Um, kind of trolling nature uh, of a lot of these 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 types of things is that um, the more you you kind of schneid and uh, look down upon and kind of lecture about one's language and one's use of language the more they're going to do it, it it's a it's a very uh, simple and easy and effective way of rebelling that is the only way to end islamic terrorism and that's what I was going for. I am illustrating absurdity by being twice as absurd. And public discourse has gotten to the point where it's okay to say this and you think it's fine. Yeah, it's a reflection of what makes America great. Is your ability to be offended and to have people offend you. A country with, that you aren't offended in is probably a country that doesn't have a lot of freedom. So any country that grants you or grants the ability for so many people to be offended that's a good country and that's a good thing you might not like it but i think it's a lot better than being in a country where nobody's offended because in a, co a country where nobody's offended there's very little freedoms i think you need to discuss these things i think people are afraid to discuss any of this you have a president and you had a secretary of state who would not say radical Islam, right? If it's that bad, if we're that politically correct, well, you can't even say that, how are we going to have an honest conversation about what the problem is? What would you say to the people who are going to watch this video and attack me online? I don't see why they would attack you for this. We're having an honest conversation. We're coming at it from two different points of view. 
Okay, so when we see the comments, let's let's see. It, it'll be. I would love to think that people would look at this as as in the spirit in which it's I think intended. More people will attack me as being an idiot. It, it, then, it will, then we'll attack okay, you. Okay, so let's get together again, and we can read the comments together. Great. All right, plan. So there was a couple things in this interview that kind of got under my skin a little bit. Um, one, and probably the main one, was her obviously the inability of this uh, interviewer to get off of the comments and, and the, the tweets. I mean, she spent the majority of the interview um, reprimanding and lecturing this guy and uh, just baffled by, how can you say these things? Do you think that's appropriate? Would you, would you say this in front of your kids? No, no, no. But it's a joke. I was angry. It's not literal. It's hyperbole. I'm trolling you. Don't you understand that? I mean, we still... I have to explain this to you for almost five minutes. I mean, after the first confrontation, after the first time she said, what did you mean by these words? I mean, do you think that's appropriate to say that? I said, no, I was joking. I was angry. Oh, okay. okay. Let's move on. No, you hate Muslims. Islamophobia. Do you think that that's a... I mean... It, it, it was already explained, and she still doesn't get it. The whole interview, she doesn't get it. She still doesn't get it. It's like it's starting like these leftists are trying to like you know picture the the the, the Trumpy, the Trump supporter, almost like a lab specimen. They're just so they're the the scientists, they're the intellectual um, elitists who are like we 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 just they're acting so irrational, they're so abnormal. Let let's let's try to understand them. Why don't you reflect that 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 uh, scientific approach back into yourself? Analyze your own thoughts. Analyze your own emotions. See if they're um, justified. You know, it's it's like they're they're so preoccupied with their enemy, with their. Um, the the, 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 the right wing, the, the, the Trump supporter, they're so preoccupied with them, they're not stopping to, to just have a look in, into, was I right? You know, was voting for Hillary Clinton, was that really um, the better decision here? Maybe I was wrong. I don't believe I'm wrong, but let me, let me, let me maybe I missed something. Let me ask some of these, these, these guys and these, 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 um, Trump supporters, what, why why did they vote? That's what I thought this was going to be, but really all it was was just basically her lecturing uh, about the his use of language. I mean, it's just it's just typical. It's typical. So hopefully this will um, they'll they'll have another um, discussion. This is uh, kind of interesting. I mean it's it's a pretty sad attempt by Yahoo to try to um, appear transparent, but you know it's an attempt. Look at how proud they were. Yahoo News. 